All right. Good morning, everyone. So I have an 11 o'clock on the dot, so we're going to go ahead and, and get started here and hopefully a few others will join as we're um, as we're kicking off. So um, just wanted to welcome everyone to today's session. My name is Heather Pease and I'll be hosting the webinar today. Um, I'm with the state of Tennessee's benefits administration team, and we have partnered with Optum to bring you a series of webinar opportunities on the HSA and FSA products throughout the year. I would like to address just a couple of housekeeping items before we do get started with our discussion. I'll keep everyone's line on mute during the call. If you'd like to ask a question or make a comment, you can do that through the chat function. We'd love to hear from you. If you do think of a question, please go ahead and send it to us in the chat box and we'll answer questions at the end of the presentation. There will be a recorded version of this webinar available early next week, and you can find that at our website, um, tn.gov slash partners for health, and it'll be located on the flexible benefits page. And I'll put that in the chat box just a minute for everyone. So now for our main presentation, I'd like to turn it over to our account executive from Optum, Lenny Selk. Lenny. Thank you, Heather. And hi, everyone. Good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you're dialing in from. Um, excited to be back with you all. Um, we are going to be talking about the topic of how to substantiate debit card transactions. And this is for the medical FSA and the limited purpose FSA. We will not be referring to HSA accounts today and they don't require substantiation anyway. So let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna drill into this. We'll probably be looking at some information uh, that'll cover about 15, maybe 20 minutes at most. And then we'll love to dive into your questions. So with this, we're going to, your medical flexible spending account or FSA, it's often called, or a limited purpose FSA with Optum Financial, this includes an Optum Payment MasterCard. That's what we're going to be talking about today is substantiating the transactions for when you use your Payment MasterCard. And it's really a fast and convenient way to pay for eligible medical expenses without having to submit those paper claim forms. You can use it at a pharmacy. You can pay at your doctor's office, or you can write your payment card number on your provider's bill. But just always remember, keep your receipts because transactions may have to be validated or substantiated. And this is per the IRS guidelines. So really, why might you be asked to provide documentation when you use your opt-in payment MasterCard purchase? Because wasn't your payment already approved when your card transaction was approved. And actually, no, there's two approval parts when you're using your debit card. The first is at the point of sale, and this provides a transaction authorization. And it's really just ensuring you have sufficient funds available in your flexible spending account at the time that you made the purchase or had the transaction. The second part, is a federal regulation that requires Optum Financial to obtain itemized receipts for transactions that don't automatically substantiate at the point of sale and before those can be applied to your plan. And we're gonna discuss soon what is automatically substantiated. Now Optum Financial was hired as your claims administrator for your flexible spending account program. And we do so according to the IRS guidelines and this protects the pre-tax benefit for your program. Now, card transactions that may not be automatically substantiated and some reasons often financial will ask you to provide additional documentation really happen generally because it might be a co-payment transaction that don't match a co-payment amount for the matching service that was provided by the state of Tennessee. Now, this tends to happen if the merchant combines a co-payment with another product or service on the same debit card transaction. So, for instance, let's say you have a, a vision exam and you purchase eyewear and the vision exam is not marked as a co-payment. You may have also purchased an eyewear protection plan, which is an ineligible expense. Now, this is going to result 
and additional documentation being requested and perhaps even repayment requested for an ineligible expense like that vision protection plan if you paid for it with your opt-in payment MasterCard. Now let's say you have eligible and ineligible items commingled on the same transaction, pretty similar to the situation we just described. But let's say, for example, you have a teeth cleaning. That's an eligible dental expense. And you have a teeth whitening at the same visit, which is not an eligible medical expense or dental expense. You should use your personal funds to pay for the teeth whitening. If these are on the same receipt and they're paid for with the Optum Bank Payment MasterCard, this is gonna result in a request for additional documentation since it's not gonna match a co-payment and a repayment request for the teeth whitening, which is an ineligible expense. Now, purchases made at merchants that don't use the inventory information approval system. That's referred to as the IIAS this is a point of sale technology. It's used by retailers that accept FSA debit cards and it helps auto substantiate purchases. It flags each item in the store scanner database with a yes or a no for FSA eligibility. Now, or in lieu of that IIAS technology, retailers can also certify that 90% or more of their sales are flexible spending eligible items. So if you use the Optum Payment MasterCard at an IIAS approved pharmacy, the eligible prescriptions should be automatically substantiated. The IIAS approved pharmacy list, it's public and it's available at the URL that you see here under the orange triangle on the slide. It's also gonna be added to the chat. Now vendors like Walmart, Target, Walgreens, even CVS, these are all approved vendors. And you can spot these pharmacies when your receipt has FSA eligible items marked on it. It'll be right on the seat, the receipt next to the eligible items. Now, Optum Financial has also received a very long list from the state of Tennessee of copay information based on your medical, dental, and vision plan. And these copay amounts, if, sent by, if they're sent by your provider that provided your service, they're marked as copay and they're paid for separately on a receipt should automatically also substantiate for a payment card transaction. These are doctor office visits, medical facilities. There's no additional documentation that you should need for these expenses, but do save those receipts. And also explanation of benefits from your insurance provider until you know that your debit card transaction claim has been fully processed. Now, any purchases that don't fall in the copay or the IIAS provider situations, those are gonna be subject to additional substantiation requirements. So let's say it does. Let's say you have one of those, what type of documentation is gonna be acceptable for a reimbursement or substantiation of the expense that you had? Now, documentation for medical FSA expense required by the IRS include a third party receipt or an explanation of benefits that contains the information that you see under the gray box on the left. So this is the date of service or the date the expenses was incurred, such as a product purchase. What's the itemized list of purchases or a detailed description of the service? What's the name of the merchant or the healthcare professional? And what's the dollar amount? And this is the dollar amount after insurance, if applicable, has been applied. So for example, if an explanation of benefits from your insurance company or itemized statements from the healthcare provider, um, those are gonna be excellent forms of documentation because it's gonna have each of these pieces of information. Now on the right hand side, conversely, these are some commonly submitted documents that usually result in a denial or request for additional documentation. So let's take a look at those. A credit card receipt. Those typically only reflect the payment amount. It doesn't have an itemization of what the product purchase or service was. So even for over the counter medical items, the credit card receipt's gonna, gonna be okay, but it needs to list the name of the item. 
bills for medical expenses where services haven't yet been incurred. We see this frequently for orthodontics or chiropractic services. So for instance, maybe your chiropractor provides a discount if you purchase multiple sessions. Chiropractic services, those are typically eligible expenses. However, you're not able to, to claim the payment of these services until it's actually been performed. So in cases like these, you might need to pay for this type of service out of your pocket and then just request a reimbursement after the service has been performed. So if your healthcare provider receipt mentions health or vision or dental insurance on it, then we're going to expect to see documentation that includes the actual amount of the insurance discount or the amount of insurance covered for the service. So when insurance documents, or I'm sorry, when insurance discounts or covers part of the expense, you can only use your FSA for the amount of your final responsibility. It's double dipping. Otherwise, the IRS um, does not approve that. So statement only indicating a paid amount. Maybe it's got a balance forward or a previous balance from your provider. You're going to need to provide the receipt or statement that lists the detail about the expense with the detail listed with the information that we see on the left of this page. So it might be your original receipt, not a balance forward receipt. Now, when you're submitting a receipt for a copayment amount, please be sure the copayment description is on the receipt. In some cases, you're going to need to ask for a receipt at the point of service. And if copayment isn't clearly identified, just ask the provider to write copayment on the receipt and sign that. Then that will pass for your copayment amount. So let's take a look at what it looks like to substantiate. Let's say you've recently made an eligible medical or limited purpose FSA purchase, or you paid for an eligible service with your Optum payment card. So when using your Optum MasterCard, remember to save those receipts in case you need to provide that substantiation. And how do you know if you're gonna need to provide that documentation? So let's take a look at a little timeline, if you will. First, you're going to receive a notification from Optum Financial. This will uh, arrive within seven business days. This is letting you know that a receipt is needed. This is going to arrive by email, if we have your email address, or it's going to come in a letter in your mailbox. Now, due to privacy regulations, this notification is not going to provide detailed transact transaction information. It's not going to have dates or specific specific amounts. It's not going to show who the merchant or provider was. It's a notification only that additional documentation is needed. But we'll, we'll show you in just a moment where you can gather the information online or you can always call us at the number on the back of your card. We're there 24-7 to answer those questions for you. Now, if Optum has not received proper substantiation within 30 days, a second notification will be sent at 30 days. And it's really just a repeat of the first notice for a request for documentation. And this is also sent in the same manner. It's going to be sent an email if we have your email address or by letter in your mailbox. Now, after another 15 days passes and proper substantiation has not yet been received, then an overdue notice will be sent. And this is going to also arrive via email or letter. This overdue notice will advise you that your Optum Payment MasterCard will be temporarily deactivated within 15 days if proper substantiation or repayment of the funds has not yet been received. Now, if a purchase cannot be substantiated, or let's say it doesn't even meet eligibility requirements, Optum Financial will ask for the funds to be returned and will credit your plan once those funds have been repaid. And the information on how to do this is included in the communication that you receive. Now, if no response is received from you within this additional 15 day period, your card will be suspended to ensure compliance with the IRS requirements. Now, during this time, you're not gonna be able to use your Optum Payment MasterCard, but you can continue to file manual claims in order to reactivate your card. You're gonna either need to submit the correct documentation or repay the expense. If you would like to see 
your debit card claim letters and get that further detail on the claim and what's needed, you can log into your account and you can access those online. It's in the I want to section that's highlighted here on your dashboard from your homepage when you log in. This is in the forms and documents sections. You see that on the left. And this is a screenshot from a participant that has one claim notification. Now, if there were more than one, these would be listed separately. You would click on the one you wanna see. And again, remember we're always available 24 seven except for major holidays and feel free to reach out to us if we can help you through any of these or answer any of your questions. Online substantiation, while it is the preferred way to provide debit card transaction substantiation, because it's convenient, right? It's confidential. You can also monitor it for updates, but you also have the option of mailing, emailing, or faxing your documentation to Optum Financial. And this, this screen here provides the information for doing so. Now, you'll always want to include a cover letter with your documentation so we can match up your documents to the right flexible spending account and claim. And you can use your letter notification we've sent you as that cover letter. So if you're gonna do this online, let's walk through that so we can see what it looks like and how to do it. You can use your computer or you can use a mobile device to access your flexible spending account with Optum Financial. If you're on your computer, you access your, your account by going to optumbank.com forward slash Tennessee. On your mobile device, you use the Optum Bank mobile app. You're going to enter your username and password that you set up for your health safe ID. Now, hopefully you've already done that, but if you have not yet set it up, I would encourage you to go back and watch and listen to the recorded Optum webinar from February 3rd, 2022, that has instructions on just how to do this. Um, you can visit the Partner for Health website, and that website is being added to the chat. This will take you to the Optum Financial webinar section, and you'll scroll down to the Optum Financial February 3rd, 2022 online account registration and portal review. There's a YouTube video there you can click on to watch and see how to do this. But once you've entered that health safe ID, it's time to get started on submitting your card substantiation. And the first thing you need to have is your documentation that we've talked about, right? You need to be ready to upload to get your debit card transaction approved. Now, this is your detailed itemized receipt and or your explanation of benefits from your insurance company. If the expense was submitted as an insurance claim, you'll have that document as well. Let's do a quick review on what a detailed itemized receipt needs to have. It needs to have all of these items that are checkmarked on this page. This, again, is how often can prove your expense was eligible. As we discussed earlier, all expenses paid for with Optum MasterCard payment card must be audited according to the IRS regulations. This is what is what is required by the FSA plan sponsor to maintain this pre-tax program and allow you to continue to have these type of benefits. Now, the detailed receipt or explanation of benefit, it needs to have this information that's checked. And when we consider this information and really what it illustrates for proof, it's showing that it's proof that it's for an eligible expense as it pertains to the IRS purposes. It has a date of service or a purchase date that fell within your plan's time frame. It was for an eligible person. It was for an eligible service or product, and it was for an amount you are responsible for paying outside of what your medical vision or dental plan has already paid for on your behalf. And you can easily upload a copy of your receipt and or explanation of benefits on your mobile device or your computer. On your mobile device, you're just going to take a picture of them, just like we take pictures of other things on our phone. If you're on your computer, you can scan an image of your receipt and save it off on your computer. So now that you've got your images that you're going to share, it's time to upload through your medical FSA or your limited purpose FSA account. If you're on your mobile device or your computer, once you're logged in, you'll see a message in this pop-up box that says needs your attention. That's how you know this particular 
that you have some receipts or substantiation documents. This means your transaction did not auto substantiate with a match copay. The product or service did not come through as a yes, as an FSA eligible product or service, um, or it wasn't from a merchant that is certified as that 90% plus FSA eligible provider. So all you need to do is just click on that needs attention link to begin the upload. If you're using your mobile device or your phone, when the link opens, you click on add receipts. If you're logged on a computer instead of your mobile app, click on upload from your com computer. That is the little blue box on this page. Then you're simply going to upload the image of the receipt you scanned or you saved on your computer. You're going to choose the file and document from where you saved it. Then you're going to add your digital signature and submit your claim. The digital signature does require that it matches how your name is set up on your account. So if it errors out, check to make sure that you're typing it correctly. Even adding characters like a space after your name will create an error if you use a nickname instead of a proper name. Um, so check for that if it errors out and try entering it in another way. Now to finish uploading receipts on your mobile device through the Optum Bank app, you're going to access the picture you took of your receipts or your documents by tapping plus receipt. This will access your photo library where you're going to select the image or images you want to upload for that debit card transaction or claim. Now, once these are selected, you'll be sent back to your receipt folder. From there, you just click save. Then you use the back arrow to add the receipt. Once you're back at the expense, you're going to click on the submit button. That's the button highlighted here. Now, here's a quick tip. If you have more than one receipt or document to attach to one claim, using the mobile app allows you to attach multiple receipts at the same time. If you're doing it on your computer, you can upload just one document at a time. Now, once you've uploaded and you've um, sent, submitted your receipts, that starts the time frame. We typically takes about five business days to get to review the expenses. So be sure to check back after that time to make sure your expenses no longer have shows that needs attention. Optum is not going to notify you when your claim or debit card transaction is approved. If further substantiation is needed, you're going to be notified via email or letter. That's that timeline we looked at earlier. You can check your claim online to see if it still shows needs attention. If so, you want to review the documentation that you sent and make sure it meets the criteria that we discussed earlier. You know, that date of service or the date expense was incurred falls within your plan time. It has an itemized list of purchases or a detailed description of your service or purchase. It has the name of a patient who incurred the service or expense. And it has the name and address of the merchant or the healthcare professional, as well as, as well as the dollar amount that is your final responsibility. Again, any questions at all you have on this, you can reach out to us 24 hours a day, seven days a week at the number that's listed on the back of your card. And it's also going to be at the end of this presentation. Now, since you are being notified via email or a mailing address about these claims, you want to be sure your contact information is up to date. You can make changes on the mobile app or by logging on to your account at optumbank.com forward slash Tennessee. But if you're updating your mailing address with Optum here, be sure to update your employer too. This will ensure that information is passed correctly to us by your employer on future files. So here are the phone numbers that I've been referring to through this session. There's also an email address that's listed. You are welcome to reach out to us in either manner. And then your unique URL, optinbank.com forward slash Tennessee is there as well. I am going to leave it here on this page as we go to the Q&A version of this session so you can jot this information down. 
Heather, that concludes the information that was prepared. All right. Thank you, Lenny. That was great. Lots of good information there. Um, so what we'd like to do now is just take some questions. Um, we've got quite a bit of time left to answer any questions that you have. So if you haven't already, put your question in the chat box, feel free to, to go ahead and do that now. And we're gonna start um, with our first question from Pam. Um, Pam asks, what if the provider gives a discount for the service after, after performed if paid in full and does not match the Blue Cross Blue Shield EOB because it has been discounted, what type of backup will be required? Um, hey there, Pam, thanks for the question. At the end of the day, what the documentation will need to support is what is your final responsibility? So you will need to have a detailed receipt from your provider that lists the discount um, that you no longer have to pay for. If your EOB doesn't match, um, the EOB would not be the proper documentation to provide. Great, thank you, Lenny. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're gonna move to our next question from Jamie. When the amount is paid from the card directly to a medical provider, why is the itemization explanation of benefits required? Uh, yeah, so Jamie, um, when you use your card to pay for any products or services, there are two levels of approval. One is done at the point of sale, and that is ensuring that you have enough funds to cover the expense. The other approval is the deeper dive into the IRS required approval of the five things that deem it an eligible expense. And that's the date of the service um, or the purchase fell within your plan year, who it was for, who the merchant is, the uh, full responsibility amount that discount that allows for any discounts that were provided by the network provider. Now, if your um, card transaction is for uh, copayment, so long as it's marked copayment on your receipt, you're probably not going to need to substantiate that. If it was for a, say, a pharmacy item that was done at an approved provider, that has a system that is used to indicate whether something is an FSA eligible expense or not, your receipt will indicate that and we'll probably not asking for substantiation. If it is having to go to your insurance, say it's at a doctor's office or for a, uh, a service, uh, let's say you had an MRI done, it's probably going to your uh, uh, medical provider to apply a network discount if you're at an in-network provider. So we need to understand what your final responsibility is. The best course of action is not to pay for that at the time of service, but to wait for that discount to be applied. Hey, Lenny, I, I might add here to, um, to what you've said. Um, there are times when um, although most services from a provider would be considered an IRS eligible expense, there are some examples such as getting your teeth whitened at the dentist. While that is um, an expense that would come directly from a, from a provider, it is not considered an eligible expense by the IRS. So we need to make sure that it is um, qualified by the IRS. That's, that's a great point, Heather. Yeah. The product or the service being um, paid for needs to be an eligible expense. And many times that's not accounted for at the point of sale. It requires documentation, to understand what that product or service is. All right, let's move on to the next question. Um, from Jane, if I buy an over-the-counter medical item and the pharmacy does not charge state of Tennessee sales tax, can I assume that it is an allowed medical expense for IRS purposes? I would the my answer on that would be that that is not the tax piece on that is not a be all end all for understanding if that's an allowable expense. Um, 
I would consult the um, optumbank.com forward slash Tennessee has a qualified, qualified expense tool where you can do some checking there. Uh, there's also some IRS sites. Uh, Publication 502 is a great resource for giving a pretty um, deep look at what is an eligible expense. And you can also check with us too. All right, thanks, Lenny. Our next question is from Kenneth. If proper documentation cannot be found, do I send a check to the PO Box 30516 in Salt Lake City? Lenny, I can help with that one. This is okay. Nicole from Optima as well. That is actually not the address that we would use for sending FSA claim repayment uh, to. I'm going to put that address in the chat right now, but I also want to note that you can make repayment via your web portal as well. If you log on to your account at optumbank.com forward slash Tennessee and you add your personal bank account, you can also make repayment directly from the website to that claim, or you can send a check payment to that address I just put in the in the chat there. But I would say that if you do go that route and send a check that you should also include a cover letter with that check, just indicating where those funds should be applied to and what claim we should um, attach them to. Those funds would be put back into your FSA and available for use on different expenses. All right, thanks, Nicole. Thanks, Nicole. Okay, let's see. Next question is from Francis. If the Optum debit card is used at an approved provider, is the provider paid from my account balance? And if denied, I will pay back the program personally. Yep, Francis, if, if you used your Optum debit card and swiped it and the transaction was approved, that first level of approval, then your provider is paid. So there's nothing to go back to the provider for. Um, and then, any further decisioning or perhaps if you owed any funds back because a claim can't be substantiated or isn't eligible, you would follow the same process that Nicole just described for Kenneth on repaying the funds to your account. Okay, thanks Lenny. Our next question is from Gloria. I have a provider that does not take insurance that I pay out of pocket for the services. He mentioned that many of his patients use their FSA to pay for their services. Would I need to get an EOB from him after I've paid him and then reimburse myself? Hey, Gloria, great question, thank you. Yes, since it's not going to insurance, there would not be an explanation of benefits involved. You would get a detailed receipt from your therapist that you would use to substantiate. Um, and if you're paying for it out of pocket, then you would use that documentation, that receipt. Access code or meeting number followed by code. Oh, sorry. You would use that receipt um, to substantiate a manual claim, which you can do online. Oh, look, we're just getting a little feedback, I think. Huh? Yep. We'll just keep going. No worries. Did you finish that one up, Lenny? Sorry. Yeah. I think so. I think okay. I did. Okay. And Gloria, okay. if you need anything else, just let us know. Okay. Our next question is from Kelly. And Kelly asks, where is a list of eligible expenses? Um, yeah. And it looks like Keith uh, supplied in the chat the link to the optumbank.com forward slash Tennessee site um, specifically where the medical expense or the eligible expense tool lives on that site. Um, there is a lot of great information in there. If you need to dig deeper, Kelly, you can also go to irs.com publication 502. Okay, next question is from Lisa Marie. And Lisa says 2022 is the first year I've set up a LFSA for dental vision expenses in addition to my HSA. I joined this webinar a bit late and may have missed this, but I'm not sure exactly how these funds work with just the one debit card connected to both accounts. Do I need to pay for the LFSA eligible expenses out of pocket and then request reimbursement? Or if I can run the card at the time of service, 
how does your system know that this is an LFSA expense instead of an HSA expense? Hey, Lisa. Um, yeah, no, thanks for joining. And um, actually, the dental and vision providers and even the medical providers use what are called merchant codes as they're processing your card transactions. So anything that has to do with vision or dental providers, if they're using those merchant codes, and most do, when they're processing your transaction, it will automatically be charged to your limited purpose FSA balance. We call it a purse first. And anything medical merchant code will charge to your health savings account purse. Um, that's how it should go. Anytime there's not a merchant code used or it's uh, indeterminate, if you will, it probably will come out of your HSA instead of your limited purpose FSA. I hope that helps you in your question, Lisa. And if you have any questions as your transactions post, please give us a call if you see that something went to your HSA when your intent was for it to go to the limited purpose FSA. Okay. Next question is from Stephanie. If I don't get an email or other alerts, can I assume substantiation isn't needed? I recently started paying for my son's braces and haven't been asked to substantiate this. Yeah. Hey, Stephanie. Um, I always um, caution against assuming anything. Um, the fact that you aren't getting emails or other alerts is a good indicator uh, that you probably don't need to substantiate, but I would also encourage you to log online to your account and make sure that that needs attention box is not there. If that box is not there, then you'll feel good about knowing you don't have anything to substantiate. I will also say that um, probably eight times out of 10 when substantiation is requested, it's on a dental or vision claim and not a medical claim. So since this is for braces and that's a dental um, piece, you know, you might want to check by logging online or feel free to give us a call. Okay, next question is from Pam. If use, if use card and it was not an approved expense, can we substitute and upload another eligible expense that was not paid from the FSA funds optum card? Yeah, hey Pam, you actually can substitute, but it's not automatic. So give us a call and speak with a representative so they can um, help make sure that that's getting processed properly for you. Okay, thanks Lenny. These are really great questions. They are. Um, Keep them coming. If you guys have anything else, that's that's all we have for now. So we will we'll hang out here for a um, couple minutes, see if we get anything else. Okay, looks like we have a follow up from Lisa Marie. Thank you for clarifying to confirm with the dental vision providers using merchant codes being used for dental vision related expenses. Those will now all automatically expense my LFSA purse instead of my HSA purse, where it all used to go before I added the LFSA. Is this correct? Yeah, Lisa, you you are correct. Uh, so long as that merchant is using a merchant code, not all do, but most do. So long as they're using that proper merchant code, it'll be automatic to go to your LFSA purse. So just keep an eye on your transactions, log into your account and make sure you uh, see those LFSA items not being charged to your H HSA. If you see any, it's probably because a merchant code wasn't used. Um, so give us a call. All right. I think you nailed it, Lisa. Uh, she did. She's got it. Hey, any other questions? I did want to just remind everyone before we go, there will be a recording of this webinar available next week. So it'll be on our website, tn.gov slash partners for health. And it's located on the flexible benefits page. So if you've never been there, there's lots of great information on, um, on the FSA on that page. So um, recommend you checking that out and obviously the optum website as well 
Oh, looks like we have another question from Kathy. I had asked a customer service rep and they stated I could not substitute an eligible claims for an ineligible claim. It has been corrected now, I believe, but I thought maybe all the customer service reps may not be aware. So more of a comment there. Thank you, Kathy. Yeah, thank you for that, Kathy. I know we wouldn't be able to substitute it for an ineligible claim, but it should be able to be substituted for a manual claim. One you paid for out of your pocket is an eligible expense, um, but just hadn't been sent in yet. Nicole, would you add anything to that? Yeah, I would, Lenny, thank you. So yeah. I just wanna add to that as well, that if you have an expense that you cannot substantiate and you want to use a different claim to offset that one, you can do so, but you cannot just upload different receipts to that claim that you don't have a receipt for already, you would need to submit a brand new manual claim. And then those funds would be used to make repayment to that other claim rather than making um, reimbursement to you directly. Thanks, Nicole. Okay. Thanks, Kathy. I'm not seeing any other questions right now. Um, I will give everybody a heads up. We do we will continue to offer these um, webinars throughout the year um, our next webinar is going to be in late april and um, we'll be reviewing irs approved expenses and um, how where you can find those on the website and how to use that list so okay well not seeing any other questions just want to um, thank everyone for joining us today thanks for all the great questions we really appreciate it and all the engagement um, I hope you guys, um, if you have, if you'd like to see the, the webinar again, that recording will be up next week. So thanks again for joining and everybody have a great day.